Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this event as part of the first phase of the Provocations track at Slow Moco. The Provocations track is facilitated by Jessica Rico. I want to say hello. And John McCallum. And then also myself, Tio Manacarado. And we also have here with us today many provocateurs, those who have submitted provocations in the past and taken part in various aspects of the project over the years. So you will also be hearing from them today. To provide a little context, the provocations track emerged as part of the ongoing provocations project, which started back in 2018 at the Conference on Movement and Computing, MOCO. And it has continued to evolve ever since through open calls for provocations on different questions, as well as panel discussions, online discourse, and events such as this, both within and beyond the MOCO community. Right, so in the broadest sense, the Provocations Project is about creating space for generative exchange uh, around novel and systemic conditions that affect cross-disciplinary and collaborative practices. Um, the project is not specific to any one discipline, topic, community, um, and yet each question that we pose um, becomes situated through its resonance in a particular context, in this case, Slow Moco and Moco. That's right. So uh, to date, we have launched two calls for provocations. Firstly, on the question of what escapes computation and interactive performance, which, as many of you know, has been the focus of phase one of the provocations track at Slow Moco, as well as our discussion today. And then secondly, uh, we have the question of what aspects of your practice or research are invisible to your collaborators, which will be the focus of phase two later this summer. These calls for provocations are open to everyone, artists, scholars, scientists, philosophers, maybe even robots. And once launched, they uh, remain open indefinitely. So we're pretty excited about that. These provocations take many forms. We have textual provocations, images, video, sound, mixed media, and perhaps things that we have not imagined yet. And we're seeking not only provocations, but also provocations upon provocations. We wanna incite a sort of iterative process of folding voices into one another to explore multiplicity within our ways of thinking, making, moving, and relating. You can view the full collection of provocations and also submit your own provocation anytime on our website, which is at provocations.online. I believe that's being posted into the chat right now. And we wanna emphasize it's important to us that these provocations don't get lost in a lonely corner of the internet. And we also do not want these provocations to be read in isolation from one another. Right, so this iteration of the provocations project, which is inspired uh, in part by Slow Moco is a sustained and distributed approach to provocation, um, revisiting and iterating on past contributions at, at the same time that we're folding them together with new voices. Um, I want to say that we're uh, deeply appreciative to Garrett Johnson and the entire Slow Moco team uh, for generously giving us space and time to extend and deepen this work. Slow Moco um, has been an incredibly generative and a fairly radical platform in the, in the sense that it encourages a multitude of scales and qualities of engagement, both synchronous and asynchronous. It's been uh, super nice to see the micro residencies and the other projects develop, and we want to make sure that we plug the final sharings for phase one of Slow Moco, which will happen on May 28th. And I think that Jessica is going to has already posted the link in the chat. Um, so in terms of the provocations track at Slow Moco, we've been really excited by all the activity um, that's been generated on the this in the provocations channel of the Slow Moco Discord server. And we're continuing to post um, submissions that we've received and trying to stir up conversation. Um, so as part of this process, we've reached out to everyone who has ever submitted a response to the question of what escapes computation in interactive performance and invited them to take part in a short um, video conversation with two or three others, which many of you have done, to discuss their provocations in relation to one another. So you can view all of these. Uh, there are five total in the first round. You can view all of these on our Manifold site for Slow Moco, and there's the link in the chat there. So this event today is the culmination of the first phase of the provocations track at Slow Moco. And as you know, it's focused on the question of what escapes computation in interactive performance. But this track is just the beginning. As you see here in, in this slide, there are three phases. We'll be entering the second phase of the provocations track later in the summer. And this will focus on 
the second call for provocations we launched on the question of what aspects of your practice and research are invisible to your collaborators. So we first launched this call at MoCo in 2019, and you can view the collection of provocations for this question on our website, the same one, provocations.online, and also submit a provocation because these calls remain open always. But we're really excited to bring also this second round of provocations back to iterate on them, to look at relationships between them. We will continue the activity in the Discord channel from now through to that next phase, so you can join us there. Um, and we will likewise have a series of video conversations about this second question. And then finally, for phase three of the provocations track at Slow Moco, which will be in the fall, you see here that it says question to be determined. And that is because we really want to let the framing of this next question emerge from our iterative process uh, in the context of phase one and phase two at Slow Moco. We want to hear from you in part today about what questions are urgent and emerging inside of this dialogue. And then we hope that well, we know that this process, but we hope that many of you also will be involved in the actual framing of that next open call for provocations. Yeah. So um, to briefly share a little bit of the remainder of this event today, um, we're going to the next transition into the lightning rounds of provocations. Uh, we've invited provocateurs to, in 30 seconds, make a brief statement and pose a succinct question related to their provocation. After the lightning round, we'll stop recording and move into breakout rooms for more intimate dialogue. And then lastly, we'll come back together as a collective to have a meta reflection on what escapes our conversations, on what escapes computation and interactive performance. So let me stop sharing here for a moment. Um, we are going to get started next with our lightning rounds. We have an amazing 15 provocateurs lined up and we're going to paste a link to the list in the prospective order here in a moment. Tioma's on that, thank you so much. And uh, each provocateur has 30 seconds. So the first person on our amazing list of provocateurs is Sarah Fadilia Lawi. So we're going to, Sarah, we're gonna spotlight you, hello. <laughs> and we're gonna give the floor to you, thanks so much. So I'll read the uh, provocation. Spending over a year now having most of my professional, social and intimate life mediated via a sort of computation, I wonder not what escapes it, as the answer to that is still almost all or the nuances of everything. I wonder instead why computation and how did I end up giving so much to it? My reflections, my tools, my medium and most of my time on this planet is given to computation. Rather than what escapes computation, my question here is, I wonder how I escaped into computation. Basically, um, with respect to computation, I mean, I'm thinking really of the question of the artful gesture. And what, what's kind of gesture that can be made by individuals or groups of people that lies in between the random and the fully determined? And I want to uh, footnote that algorithmic algorithms by, by, by construction are going to be either deterministic or random. That's gonna be my fun, first fundamental point. And the other thing is that anything that a sensor uh, or any kind of measure that we construct, uh, whether it's scientific or engineering, like a sensor, basically makes some aspects of experience visible and makes other aspects, all other aspects invisible. So two provocations. A question is what would be, what would be an art that's not made by humans and not for humans? Henri Bergson argued that we exist in memory, that the past is an ever unfolding movement, an ever unfolding movement, and we can move with it, shifting our attention from automatic habits to willed recollections through planes of consciousness. In this light, gesture recognition computes links of similarity between past motions and present motions, but these links are a negligible subset of the universal movement unfolding across time. So I hold that computing is a form of information processing 
and that information processing only treats events or transformations in retrospect or as prospects and not as ongoing happenings. It follows that ongoing happenings would escape computation. Now, I also hold that emotion is a form of transformation processing that deals with events and transformations as ongoing happenings. And assuming that there are no dichotomies here, but relations, my question is how to relate computation and emotion, information and transformations. So in considering Moindy's provocation, the, some of the ongoing transformations are the history of the computer being born as a weapon of war and manufactured under horrific, horrific exploitative conditions. This history is not so much escaping computation as being erased deliberately as part of the mythology of technologically enabled progress. More recently, I've been interested in memory as a personal dimension of history. Techno-capitalism erases memory as part of its strategy to disrupt historical local economies, and in doing so, erases our connections to place and community. By avoiding these conflicts and entanglements with the culture and economic context of our tools, how they were built, by who, for whom, and for what purpose, we propagate their power to erase memory and therefore their power to erase our communities and our connection to place. And so a question might be, how can we remember using these tools? Well, everything escapes computation because computation creates worlds uh, rather than representing them. It creates computable worlds. Our alienation from each other and the planet has to do with millennia long processes of alignment with fixed points of vision like this one, including inducing radical atrophy in our movements and perceptions, becoming quantifiable only through that impoverishment. In order to revert this process towards a planetary health, we need to regain a richer perception and multisensory integration, an irreducible body. I reconceptualize the body as proprioceptive swarm with its self-organizing BI, body intelligence, which we can unfold, reversing control obsessions and embracing indeterminacy as capacity to vary for an incalculable world and an art of life. If I want to be honest with myself, I have to admit that I'm more interested in dance, body and movement as a computing researcher than I am interested in technology as a dancer. Creating interactive performances requires creation, technical work, and of course, artistic work. I'm wondering how these two processes differ, creating with or creating the digital tools and creating with the body. Can the part of creating through coding, engineering, computing be as satisfying, accessible, direct, and mediated, embodied, and I dare to say primitive or therapeutic as dancing, drawing, singing, handwriting? There is art therapy, music therapy, dance or movement therapy, but not something like engineering or coding therapy. And what this tells us about our creation or interactive performances using computing versus just performances. Does this tell us something about why we create or what do we share through these processes? Well, I don't have any text to, to, to read, but if I, Stan, from this point of view, where um, I, I think and I share this idea with many others that nowadays many elements of humanity, the living in totality, escape computation. I just have one question to share with everybody is um, could we imagine what will happen in 1000 years from now? What will be escaping still computation? farewell to the concept of progress, capture, separation from the clear, clarifying divisions. Into a bustle, a literal mess, always dirty, always damp, always tentacle-like, even the time always untidy. Otkin compost, conjugated world, circumscribed bodies disablements. Eating each other correctly requires meeting each other correctly, and that in turn requires synchronicity, 
that is good enough. My question would be, if uh, synchronicities are no longer good enough and falling apart, what if uh, human performance were no longer thinkable? What if computation were to meet intraculturally messed up, confused heaps of compost? I guess my provocation is um, kind of a problematization of the idea that we might try to enable computation to capture all of the performer in, it, in an interaction, because I don't think that that's possible. Um, but what I am proposing and what I'm interested in is um, an acceptance or even an embrace of the difference um, of computation's difference in its modes of perception and meaning making and in using them to open up potential interactive spaces that subvert or challenge or expand our own modes of thinking, moving and becoming. So for me, it's not so much about what escapes computation as about um, what kind, uh, how how can new and unexpected embodied knowledge and perceptual awareness be brought about through the interaction of computation and performer? So um, I'm gonna want to ask and a question that's actually been in my mind is uh, in, in certain art forms, uh, computation and interaction have progressed asynchronously. Um, dance uh, has been dealing with technology since the latter part of the 20th century, uh, including computational applications in motion capture and in sound and so on. The question that I ask is, are we at a stage where computation is ubiquitous in some art forms? Uh, are we at a stage where it is new? Uh, are we at a stage to ask ourselves, should, are there places where we need to omit computation. Uh, the question comes up between organic cells and the inorganic. And we as the organic cells are in charge of the inorganic that we incorporate into our creative process. And uh, in, in dance, uh, especially having gone through the postmodern period of the last 20, 30 years of the 20th century, where the performs the instrument being the kinesthetic body, deconstructed every aspect of its multidisciplinary identity and including the applications of technology and computation in its creative process, uh, in its language, in movement vocabulary and in performance. So this is where I ask, where are we at now? Do we communicate with each other? Hi, Sue. I uh, had the great, interesting experience of revisiting two provocations I submitted in 2018, which was my first exposure to MoCo. So I love both seeing the reflection of myself at that time as a very naive researcher <laughs> and artist in some ways. So much has happened since then. So I will summarize one, which was a question about how uh, social movements are or can be or, or have in the past been captured by computation. And I think this is particularly come to light in various ways. So my renewed provocation would be um, how, how are social movements currently captured by computation and what escapes being captured and what is important that it is, what is important in social movements that escapes computation and also what is important in social movements that escapes through computation. We all know that no one life escapes death. Life and death are given together in chirality. As a writing form, computation is technical and unnatural. Computation describes the world on its own terms and intimates the world's most ecstatic excesses. Media art often stages computation as an imitator of life, but it is dead. What does it mean to take computation carefully? by the hand? And how do we care for computation's own icy grasp, its own spectral care? Hi. Um, so yeah, I've been thinking about my provocation and how I ended with a statement that um, what escapes provocation in interactive um, art, uh, almost everything, 
And I've been realizing that I was kind of personifying the computer, if you like, as a sort of cold, hard um, object machine and, you know, putting myself or humans as in opposition to that. So I wanted to challenge myself to think about how can I think myself into the other that is machine. And I guess my question is something like, what is it like to be a machine? And particularly, what is it like to be a performing machine? So my, my current thinking is, uh, let's escape from computers. And my question is, what will remain of computation if we succeed to get rid of computers? Will computational thinking stay on? Are we going to be nostalgic? So dear computer, will I miss you? <laughs> <laughs>